Most of you have probably heard about the expression knee-jerk reaction. And a knee-jerk knee reaction is kind of a bias that you have where you just don't like something and the minute somebody brings it up, you start thinking of why it's so evil, so terrible, so horrible, so wrong. Uh, never mind the facts, never mind the fact that you've never really investigated it. Nevertheless, you have decided it's no good. And if anybody dare talk about it in your presence, you will put them in their place. <laughs> Well, sadly, that's how a lot of nutritionists and sadly, even a few doctors feel about the keto or the low carb diet. They just have a knee jerk reaction. It's evil. It's bad. It's no good at all. So I thought I'd just give you an example of uh, a, a keto slash low carb meal or a couple of them and ask you the question, will it improve or make worse the meal if we add some carbs to it? So to start with, we have a steak and we have some broccoli smothered in cheese, a good low carb meal, not much carbs to the broccoli and cheese, virtually no carbs to the steak. Uh, this is not going to raise your blood sugar and that makes me happy and that should make every diabetic happy, but it won't make all nutritionists happy. Some of them will say, oh, that's too keto. Dennis, how could you eat such a thing? Don't you see how evil it looks? Well, no, it doesn't look evil to me at all. And the research doesn't back that up, that this is an evil meal. And people that eat like this generally are going to have lower A1Cs, uh, better triglycerides, better fasting glucose, just going to have healthier lipids all around. And even if their cholesterol goes up a bit, which sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, overall, uh, they will be better off. Now, to satisfy the person who objects and says, oh, this is no good at all, we could add to it some carbs. So let's just consider this. Okay, now have we satisfied the nutritionists that don't like keto? Oh yes, they say that's a much healthier meal. But look at really what we've added. White rice. I mean, brown rice is not much better, but white rice is the worst of all. It has almost no nutrients, almost no vitamins, almost no fiber. And it has two good things going for it. It tastes good and it fills you up. So yeah, this would be more filling, but another possible way to fill yourself up is just have bigger portions of the meat or bigger portions of the broccoli. Uh, this white rice does not improve what had been a keto meal. The only thing it does is it de-ketos. It, it makes it where it's no longer keto. And it also makes it where it won't keep your blood sugar rise nice and slow and gentle and smooth. Instead, you'll get a sharp spike from the rice. All right, you say, well, I'm not a big fan of rice anyway, or some of you are, but uh, let's just try one other example of a way we can de-ketosize this meal. And that would be, here's a favorite in America. I can't speak about the other nations, but Americans love their mac and cheese. So here we go, mac and cheese. We have now killed the keto aspect of this meal. It now has plenty of carbs. So if you are one of those that says, well, you got to have carbs in every meal, 30 carbs, 40 carbs, 50 carbs or more, if you're going to be really healthy. Well, I guess you're happy now. We've got our meat. We've got our broccoli and cheese, and we've got our mac and cheese. The cheese is not the problem. The macaroni is. It's made from white flour, and it's going to turn into sugar in your body. It's going to give you a glucose spike. Without the mac and cheese, very little to no glucose spike. With the mac and cheese, a significant glucose spike. Question, have we improved this meal or not? The answer, of course, is we haven't improved it at all. Is macaroni and cheese a powerhouse nutritional bonanza that's going to just fill you with strength and goodness and power? No, it has two good things going for it. Number one, it tastes good. And number two, it fills you up. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? That's exactly what the rice does. It tastes good. It fills you up, but it doesn't do anything for you except spike your blood sugar. So let's do away with the mac and cheese and give you one more example of a side dish that a lot of Americans and probably a lot of people in other places would enjoy. And that is some good old pork and beans. 
So we add a bunch of beans. And before this, we had what was pretty close to a keto meal. And a lot of the nutritionists would say, that's evil, that's malicious, that's, that's bad. That is uh, something that's going to harm you. But now we've added our carbs to it. But let me ask you, do you really suppose that pork and beans is a major source of nutrition? Or do you suppose that, uh, suppose that it has some kind of goodness to it that's going to make you healthier than you would be if you simply ate the steak and the broccoli? The answer is no, there's nothing magical about pork and beans. In fact, not only do beans raise blood sugar fairly significantly, you can get by with a smaller amount of beans sometimes, but with pork and beans, they add sugar to it, which makes it worse yet. So before the pork and beans, if we just had the steak and the macaroni and cheese, nice meal, no blood sugar spike, all is well, add the pork and beans, we get a blood sugar spike, all is not well. We, once again, have satisfied those who say keto is evil, keto is bad, keto is a danger to your health. So we've satisfied them, now we've got our pork and beans, but have we really done ourselves a favor? All right, let's go on to another type of keto meal. Well, here is another keto type meal. We have salmon. Keto people love salmon, and that is because it is a fatty fish, one of the fish that has the most fat to it. Although this looks a little dry because we made it several hours ago and we had problem with our first go around with this video and the audio wasn't so good. We're doing it second time around. So it looks a little bit dry, but originally it looked great. Anyway, salmon, avocado, which keto people love. Uh, it does have carbs, but uh, they are uh, mostly fiber carbs. And so it's not gonna do much to your blood sugar. And then uh, basically a chef's salad. So the chef's salad, the salmon, the avocado, uh, a very nice keto or at least a low carb meal for sure. And a lot of people would look at this, myself included, and say, well, this is a healthy meal. And you say, well, I don't know if I could get filled. Well, then you add more salmon or a second avocado or a bigger salad. But this kind of a meal will not do much to your blood sugar. Let me repeat, this kind of a meal will not do much to your blood sugar. And if you've got an A1C of 8, 10, 12, 14, these are the kind of meals you need to focus on. Those that will not spike blood sugar, because guess what? If you can keep your blood sugar fairly low, your baseline will begin to drop and drop, and you will find better fasting glucose, better A1Cs, lower glucose as the days and weeks and months go by eating these kinds of meals, especially if you just eat two meals a day and maybe have some bulletproof coffee in the morning. But a lot of the nutritionists and some of the doctors would say, oh, no, wait a minute. That is not a nice meal. That is a keto type meal. And we know keto is evil. What's that? The knee jerk reaction. Keto must be evil because my mama said keto was evil or my cousin Billy Bob said keto was evil or my brother Johnny said keto was evil. So I know it must be evil. But really what's so evil about some salmon and a salad and an avocado? Does that really look evil to you? But to satisfy the nutritionists, the ones that think keto is terrible or low carb is a bad, bad thing. Well, we can fix that easy enough. We just <laughs> have some tried out mashed potatoes. Again, we made these several hours ago, but mashed potatoes, right? Now it's not a keto meal at all. We've just killed the keto element inside of it. That keto element is dead because there's enough uh, carbs in these mashed potatoes to where this is no longer a low carb meal. And of course, most people, they're not just gonna have one high carb item in their, their food or their meal, they'll, they'll usually have two or three of them. But this by itself is gonna raise your blood sugar. Uh, a potato is not much different from sugar in how fast and how powerfully it raises blood sugar. So the nutritionists that, that hate keto and love carbs would be much happier if we showed them this meal. If they say, well, how are you eating? You take a picture, You've got your salmon, your avocado, your salad, but, and they're getting depressed, but then they see the mashed potatoes and they say, ah, now you're on track. You're eating your carbs. Every meal should have quite a few carbs. So you're doing good. Keep it up. Well, no, <laughs> if you're trying to get your blood sugar down, or if you're wanting to keep your blood sugar down, or if you're not even diabetic, not even pre-diabetic, but you don't want to become pre-diabetic or diabetic, then this kind of a thing, this Mashed potatoes is not for you, nor baked potatoes, nor French fries, 
nor fried potatoes, nor hash browns, anything connected with a potato is essentially a non-starter. You just don't want to get involved with them. So again, there's people that are going to tell you to eat healthy. You got to make sure you have your carbs at every meal. I don't buy it. Mike, the glucose meter doesn't buy it. My A1C doesn't buy it. My A1Cs tell me that the lower my carbs go, and the more I avoid the high carb items like mashed potatoes, like pork and beans, and, and all these other things that uh, raise blood sugar, uh, the better off I'll be. So the answer is no thanks, no mashed potatoes, please. You say, okay, all right, uh, Dennis, I won't have mashed potatoes, but how about, boom, a nice chunk of bread. Who can uh, argue with bread? Everybody eats bread. My mama ate bread. My grandma ate bread. My great grandpa loved his bread. Who doesn't love bread? Well, part of our problem is we eat more bread than anybody ever did. Grandpa may have had one or two slices per day, but we have bread rolls and various forms of bread and biscuits and donuts and all kinds of bread products until we're stuffing ourselves with bread. And if you've got an A1C 8, 10, 12, Really, even in the sevens, you want to avoid bread because guess what? The avocado is not going to affect your blood sugar much at all. The salmon, zero carbs. The salad, yeah, it's got a few carbs, but not going to do much. But this bread, yeah, it looks good and probably would taste good. I'm not going to try it, but it is going to affect your blood sugar. So once again, are we improving our meal by simply adding some extra carbs? And the answer is no. Not at all. Here's another form of bread, a bagel. Who doesn't love bagels, right? You smear some cream cheese on them or some kind of a topping, put, maybe put a little jelly. Bagels are a nightmare. They're just about as bad as donuts. This bagel has something like 47 grams of carbs. That's more than a, Coke, a can of Coca-Cola, 12 ounce can. And that is uh, more than most candy bars are, unless it's a giant candy bar. So you're getting as much sugar as if you went to the store and bought a candy bar and ate it real fast. We don't understand that about bread because bread doesn't taste sweet. Bre bread tastes like, well, bread. But just because something doesn't taste sweet doesn't mean it's not full of sugar. Bread is full of sugar. It's just that those sugar molecules are combined so they don't taste like sugar. They go down into your stomach. Guess what? They become sugar and they raise blood sugar like crazy. You might as well be eating a candy bar and a half as eating this bagel. You say, all right, well, what about a good, healthy muffin? A good, healthy muffin. Muffins are great, right? This muffin has something like 45, 47 grams of carbs to it. Again, more than a candy bar, more than a 12 ounce can of soda. Tremendous amount of carbs. You are stressing your metabolic system by eating these things. And, uh, but there are, there are nutritionists and even maybe some doctors who would say, well, you just got to have some carbs. There's not enough carbs in this meal if you don't have something like this muffin. Well, who in the world can believe that? This is a perfectly good meal all by itself without any significant source of carbs. Let me say that again, without any significant source of carbs. I didn't say it has no carbs. Some people say, well, I'm eating zero carbs, but I eat green leafy vegetables and some salads. Well, then you're not eating no carbs because a salad's going to have some carbs, but not many. And they're locked up in fiber. They're not going to affect you much. The meat has zero carbs. The avocado has uh, quite, uh, well, a medium amount of carbs, but they're mostly fiber. So this meal by itself, very gentle on your blood sugar. Add this baby, not gentle at all. Well, here's another example. Some people would say, all right, a good old bowl of ramen soup, ramen soup. Boy, everybody's been eating ramen soup for years. It's, a, it's the poor man's friend because you can buy a package of it for 30 cents or so and make it up and you've al almost got a meal. Throw in a few veggies and bam, you're good to go. Pure carbs, my friend. But some people would tell you that the salmon and the avocado and the salad are not enough. You've got to have your source significant source of carbs. So bang, here you go. Ramen soup, pure carbs, a nightmare for the diabetic, a nightmare for the pre-diabetic and not even good for the non-diabetic. What's this ramen soup made of? 
it's a white flour product. They make the noodles out of white flour. They put some seasoning in. Yeah, it tastes pretty good. But it's not going to be a friend of your blood sugar. And if you don't believe that, ask Mike the meter, the glucose meter. Test yourself about an hour after eating and see what happens with the ramen soup and then have the next meal without the soup and you'll find a much lower score. And of course, to make, to add insult to injury, I guess I should say, sometimes we add these and we pride ourselves that, well, uh, I deserve it. And after all, I can't eat a meal that's just carb free. Got to have a few carbs. So why not get them in a nice cinnamon roll? Nice cinnamon roll. Uh, no, <laughs> you don't. And yet for some of these nutritionists, if you don't have any carbs in your meal or very few carbs, uh, you're a bad boy. You're a bad girl. You might be 75 years old, but they look at you like you're a bad little girl or you're a bad little boy. This is trash and it belongs in the trash. And if you think I'm going to eat this after this video is made, you are most definitely wrong. I am not going to eat this. So sugar, a lot of white flour, just going to form a dough ball in your colon, going to spike your blood sugar like crazy. For someone wanting to get their glucose down, their A1C down, their fasting glucose down, it would make no sense at all. No sense at all. These foods I have shown you, I can't speak for other countries so much. I know a little bit about Africa. I've been there quite a few times. A little bit about India. I've been there quite a few times. But I can tell you one thing. These are all popular sides in America. We eat this all the time. Mac and cheese. Some kids practically grow up on pasta and mac and cheese because they'll eat it. They like it. And it's easy to make. And it's cheap. And uh, you try to give a child a salad. <laughs> and they'll go, no. But I'll tell you what, if they get hungry enough, they'll eat it. But you give them some mac and cheese or some mashed potatoes or some rice, they'll probably eat it. And especially if you offer them a sweet dessert after they finish that meal. So we've got things exactly backwards. Let me say that again. We've got things exactly backwards. When they try to tell you keto is dangerous, low carb is dangerous, something you should avoid at all costs, don't you believe it? You think about this video we just made and you ask yourself, did Dennis improve the meal when he added the mac and cheese? Did, was the meal superior when he added the rice? Did he make it healthier when he added the mashed potatoes or the pork and beans or the ramen soup or the bagel or the muffin? Or the big chunk of bread? Did Dennis really improve the meal by adding that to what was already a good meal? Did that improve it? The answer, of course, is not at all. Think about it. You say you want to lower your glucose. You say, I've got to do better. You say, I've got to get my A1C down. I've got to get my fasting glucose down. I've got, I can't go on with diabetes. Well, here's the secret, my friend. Quit messing with these sides that will just spike your blood sugar like crazy and go for the foods that are healthy. And if you say, well, yeah, but I'm not sure I can get full, then have some more low carb foods. Eventually you'll fill yourself. And here's what you'll find. When you eat more fat and protein in your diet, you're not going to be as hungry so fast. Nothing makes you hungrier and hungrier faster than eating high carb foods because your blood sugar goes way up it drops way down. And within about two to three hours, you're hungry all over again. You eat fat and you go four or five hours. You think, you know, it's about time to eat, but I don't hardly feel it. And that's one of the reasons for the beauty and the efficacy of the low carb slash keto diet. You will not be hungry. You will not be punishing yourself. You won't go around feeling like a martyr singing in your closet. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen you will feel good and there's all kinds of meals you can eat and there's all kinds of substitutes that are keto substitutes for various foods that you have to give up. You can do it, my friend, but some change is going to have to be made.